this answered one question. We didn't know whether this room would work for this meeting. Maybe doesn't work. So. <laughs> Just bear with us, though. Good turn. Uh, yeah. Um, I will call the Fauquier County School Board meeting to order. And at this time, if everybody would please stand. And is Mr. Seitz in here? Yes, he's here. We saw him earlier. Mr. Seitz, would you like to lead us in the pledge? to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Ms. Callahan, if you would please take the roll. <laughs> and at this time, we will Look for a motion. Madam Chair, I motion that the agenda be accepted as written or adopted as written. Second. Motion and a second that the agenda be adopted as written. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. And we move to special presentations, the fun part. Is that you? Or not? Uh, you have to this man. <laughs> <laughs> Is here. Yeah. Steve is here. I saw him in the back earlier. Yeah, right here. <laughs> we have a celebrity in our midst. Come on up, Mr. Parker. How are you, sir? We we have a um, recognition for Mr. Parker that we. Uh, as, that was part of the Washington Post's uh, recognition of him as uh, outstanding building administrator. But um, we also got word today, I got a call from the Virginia Association of Secondary School Principals that Mr. Parker is the state middle school principal of the year. That is a, 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 an extreme honor. I can tell you as a former high school principal, uh, it's an outstanding honor uh, and recognition. So congratulations. And you get to go to the homestead to be introduced and recognized. And I think it's a state, it's a rule that the superintendent must also go <laughs> to the homestead. I, and <laughs> I, I just think that's appropriate. So. Anyway, let me read a little bit about Steve Parker. The Washington Post, Post equates distinguished leader title to principals who manage effectively, demonstrate and encourage creativity and innovation, foster cooperation between the school and the community, maintain a continuing dialogue with students and parents, demonstrate leadership and exemplify commitment, and continue to play an active role in the classroom. That is Steve Parker. Cedar Lee Middle School principal Steve Parker said he felt humbled and blessed when he was told he had been selected as the distinguished educational leader for Fauquier County Public Schools. Mr. Parker said, quote, I have these incredible people I get to work with and we've done this together. This hasn't been a one-man show, but the combined efforts of so many people. There are, was definitely no shortage of accolades for Mr. Parker from all facets of, the, facets of the Bealton community. His faculty and staff raved about his management style how his management style had transformed the school into a place where people felt secure in knowing that they were all, all care, that they would all care for each other. One faculty member said, quote, for the first time in years, I was enthusiastic about my profession and I began looking forward to going to work again. Community members say his love for kids of all ages is evidence in all the activities he participates in. He is a joy to be around and he has a great sense of humor. Steve is a family person. If he could adopt every child who needed a home, I think he would. His heart is huge. That's a very, very nice thing to say. Mr. Parker's view, the, Mr. Parker's view the key factor to effective leadership is relationships. You've got to know your kids. Amen to that. You've got to know their parents, and you've got to know their siblings. It's important for a child to be greeted by name, or when they're out sick for a week, to have someone say, I'm really glad you're back. We've missed you. And when you suffer, and when they suffer some heartache, they know you care. It's no surprise that principals often have to make tough decisions. What is his approach? I gather as much as I can, 
If it's appropriate, I listen opinions and thoughts, and then I pray. I pray a great deal. My faith is very important to me, said Mr. Parker. In the end, I use one filter, what is best for children. Sometimes that's, a hard, that's hard to discern. What's best for kids is not always what's easiest for adults. Even so, Mr. Parker said, there isn't anything about being a principal that isn't enjoyed. One of the special perks, he said, is taking part in the school's pride celebrations. Pride is the acronym he coined for the school's common expectations. Politeness, respect, integrity, discipline, and equality. Please join me as we recognize Steve Parker, Fauquier County's public school's distinguished leader. Congratulations. Thank you. Dr. Mitchell. Will Kathy Crane please come forward? As Kathy comes forward, Kathy is a teacher at Coleman Elementary School. This year's Agnes Meyer Outstanding Teacher Award for Fauquier County is homegrown. She was born here, raised here, schooled here, and has taught here for the entirety of her 17 years in the profession. Kathy Crane, Reading Specialist at Coleman Elementary School, credits the long line of excellent teachers in this county with influencing her to attend college and pursue teaching, which set her on the path to this prestigious Washington Post Award. It is abundantly clear that the ebullient Mrs. Crane, Ms. Crane, loves her students and loves teaching. Year to year, she teaches in whatever grade level she is needed and over the years has taught every elementary grade. This year, she is teaching three first grade reading groups, one first grade writing group, and a third grade class, and a third grade writing class. Twice a week, she works one-on-one -on -one with a second grader who needs her most. She also does intervention work with two first graders. She said her groups are small, so we can really meet students' individual needs. I think the neatest thing, she says, is that my job is never the same each day. I wouldn't trade it for the world. As crazy as it gets some days, as high stress as it can get, where else can you go where you walk into the door and have an opportunity to make a true difference every single day? They are my kids, and I love them, unquote. Ms. Crane said that what she enjoys the most is her position, and in her position is seeing the light bulb go off when students get it. She loves developing relationships with her students and letting them know that there is someone who truly cares about them and cares deeply about their learning. Her students say, Ms. Crane makes me happy. She is the best teacher. She is the nicest teacher. She helped me learn to read. My favorite thing about Ms. Crane is that she plays games to actually teach us. She likes candy and she likes us. <laughs> and finally, the student said she encourages us by telling us we can do things and not to listen to those people who say we cannot. Please join us tonight as we recognize one of our greatest teachers, Ms. Kathy Crane, as our Agnes Myers teacher. Ms. Bourne. Will Ms. Darlene Marshall please come forward? And as Darlene comes forward, let me tell you a little bit about Darlene. In March 2013, Darlene Marshall became the 51st person in the nation to receive the special needs Right over here, darling. <laughs> right, right next to me. <laughs> to receive the special needs transportation training endorsement from the National Association for Pupil Transportation. Ms. Marshall has worked for transportation with Fauquier County Public Schools, students and families for almost 33 years and currently serves as the transportation supervisor for special education services. To earn the Certificate of S for Special Needs Transportation, Ms. Marshall completed a comprehensive program of instruction on special needs transportation, including much coursework and hands-on training. 
the special needs transportation endorsement was created to offer an opportunity for transportation professionals like Mrs. Marshall to enhance their knowledge in safety and efficiency in transporting students with disabilities and to develop the skills to become exceptional special needs transportation leaders, which Ms. Marshall is. I am honored to work with Ms. Marshall, who is dedicated to and cares very deeply for the students in Fauquier County Public Schools. Please join me in congratulating Ms. Marshall for her achievement. and Stephanie Butler, if you could come forward. And while you all come forward, I'll tell you that good evening. Tonight, we are proud to introduce the second annual Classified Awards. As many of you know, the Classified Awards, better known as the Tree Awards, are a result of Aspirations 2015. This program was established to ensure that classified employees were recognized for their accomplishments. Here in front of us, we have the recipients of the tree award called the Aspen Tree. First place winner, Pearl Anns, became a bus driver in September of 1987. She is known for her cheerful and pleasant disposition. She is often seen coming into the office singing a song and wearing a big <laughs> grin that brightens everyone's afternoon. Miss Anns has implemented many great ideas on her bus. She has created a reading program for the elementary students. Her strong worth ethics are evident through her outstanding attendance and willingness to take on additional work assignments. Thank you. Second place is Stephanie Butler, who began working um, as a bus driver in September of 1988. Miss Butler. Oh, you're old. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was a typo. Um, <laughs> Uh, Mrs. Butler has assisted in many improvements with the Transportation Department through the years. Her initiatives have bettered our transportation programs. Mrs. Fisher states her patience is endless and she has nerves of steel when out on the road with a brand new driver. Stephanie also assists with the in-service meeting. Drivers and aides look forward to her innovative games which demonstrate the enormous responsibilities of their jobs. Thank you both. You have a If um, Francis Bell and Wally Davis could come forward. Um, tonight, as they've come down, they're being honored for the Maple Tree Award, and this is presented to our custodians, area building managers, and the courier. The Maple Tree symbolizes the ability to balance in our lives. So our first place winner for um, the Maple Tree Award is Frances Bell. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bell began service in July of 2010 as a roaming custodian with Facilities Management Department. Francis has taken the lead role in our training with the custodial staff. The staff knows when he arrives because he does so humming a pleasant tune. <laughs> he can be counted on to get the job done right in a short amount of time. I think we have some singers. <laughs> um, second place goes to Wally Davis. Mr. Davis began service in June of 1997 as head custodian at CM Bradley Elementary School. Beth Bank states that we simply could not encounter and navigate the complexities of our daily and weekly schedules and duties without his assistance. Mr. Davis is extremely loyal to our school and takes exceptional pride in his work and of the work he supervises. He has a gift for fixing things from the desks to the vacuums to pencil sharpeners. Thank you very much. <laughs> If Jeanette Smith and Mary Baker could please come forward. 
Ms. Smith and Mrs. Baker are being recognized tonight for the Oak Tree Award. The Oak Tree Award is presented to instructional ass assistants, library aides, and bus aides. The Oak Tree symbolizes strength. <laughs> Tonight, first place winner is Jeanette Smith. Ms. Smith began service in August of 2004 as a library assistant at Warrington Middle School. Kathy Howard, Warrington Middle School librarian, states, with her organizational skills, her willingness to always help out, her ability to stay updated with technology, and her cap capability of working with all school personnel, she has been my right arm. She is able to help students find that right book and also able to give teachers guidance when they're searching for curriculum related materials. Jeannie has the innate ability to know what needs to be done and just does it without being asked. Second place winner, Mary Baker. Mrs. Baker began service in August of 2003 as a bus aide. Mrs. Mary Baker is short in stature but tall in leadership, <laughs> states Darlene Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> she is an excellent bus aide with an ability to communicate with nonverbal children. After a home visit for a new student, Mary is able to use her confidence to make the parent feel comfortable. Thank you both. <laughs> Angelette Carter and Anne Gray, if you could please Come on down. I've been dying to do that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Come on down. <laughs> Ms. Carter and Ms. Gray are being um, presented tonight the Pine Tree Award. The Pine Tree Award is presented to our school nutrition staff. First place is Angela Carter. Ms. Carter began service in September of 1995, school nutrition worker at C. Hunter Ritchie Elementary School. Angela always steps up to the plate when asked to. She works well with others. She has had numerous compliments from faculty about the quality of her work. I am very proud and honored to have Ms. Carter as my right-hand person, stated Daphne McGee. Second place, Anne Gray. Ms. Gray began service on October 2007 as school nutrition manager at C. Thompson Elementary School. She is a clear and compassionate communicator regarding kids' lunch accounts and strives to ensure that parents' gui guidelines for how cafeteria money is spent is adhered to. Anne is always willing to be flexible and implement new ideas that will keep her kitchen running smooth and efficient. She takes the time to get to know each student and make sure she gives them not only hot and healthy nutrition every day, but also the courage and support they need. Thank you both. <laughs> Deborah Miller and Vicki Sent. The final award for tonight is the Willow Tree Award. The Willow Tree Award is presented to clerical, school health nurses, and or support staff. The Willow Tree symbolizes healing. <laughs> First place winner tonight is Deborah Miller. Mrs. Miller began service in August of 2004 as a secretary bookkeeper at P.B. Smith Elementary School. Ms. Miller lives by her vision that students come first. Dr. Comstock states, and I quote, all school secretaries are special folks, and I've known many in my career, but Ms. Miller stands out among all the others. She excels in her position and has the third consecutive year of an excellent audit. Congratulations. <laughs> Second place winner is Vicki Sint. Vicki Sent began employment in July of 1989. She holds the position of office manager to the assistant superintendent for administration in the school board office. Ms. Bourne states that Vicki is a gem in dealing with others. She is calm, confident, empathetic, and diplomatic. Vicki gratefully participates in training and development opportunities. When she sees a positive training opportunity, she also encourages others. When someone is out, Vicki unhesitatingly volunteers to help out when she is, when others are extremely busy. Thank you.
I'm clearly not on the ball enough. <laughs> Will the recycling poster contest winners please come forward with your posters? Let me tell you a little bit while they're lining up um, about the recycling poster contest. As part of the school division's Aspirations 2015 strategic plan, the school division made a commitment to increase its emphasis on environmental stewardship. Recycling is part of this initiative. School recycling programs benefit students, their families, and the community by diverting waste from very costly landfills. The school division appointed a recycling committee with a representative from each of our schools. This past spring, the committee held what I'm calling the first annual recycling poster contest, asking students to submit posters that promote an awareness of recycling. More than 3,000 students from 14 schools participated. The committee members and school administrators who judged the posters were amazed and encouraged by the creativity exhibited by our students in meeting this challenge. In April, these posters were displayed at the division-wide arts festival. The winners received certificates and we gave them a little goodie certificate for ice cream. And the posters may also be viewed on our website. Tonight, we are pleased to recognize the division-wide first and second place winners. Students, as I call your name, please step forward. <clears throat> first place winners, kindergarten and first grade, Piper Nelson, Bradley Elementary School. <clears throat> second and third place, I mean, so, I'm sorry, second and third grade first place winner, Emma Costanzo, Miller Elementary School. Is Emma here? <laughs> Fourth and fifth grade first place winner, Marie Swee, Bradley Elementary School. Is Marie here? <laughs> Sixth grade. First place winner, Madison Clark, Cedar Lee Middle School. <laughs> Seventh grade, first place winner, Willem Grabner, Marshall Middle School. <laughs> Eighth grade, first place winner, Stephen Kendall, Cedar Lee Middle School. Ninth grade, first place winner, Adriana Jimenez, Liberty High School. <laughs> Tenth grade, Jason Cody, Liberty High School. <laughs> you can see why these folks are, are first and second place winners for the division, I think. Eleventh grade, Matthew Breckley, Liberty High School. Twelfth grade, Joshua, uh, Josh Lewis, Liberty High School. And our second place recipients are kindergarten, first grade, Emma Chambers, Thompson Elementary School. Is Emma here? Second and third grade, Aaron Solden, Smith Elementary. Fourth and fifth grade, Audrey Fisher and Madeline Powers from Coleman Elementary School. They had a successful joint collaboration. Sixth grade, Shale and Celia Stromberg Brusco, Marshall Middle School. Oh, seventh, seventh grade? Celia, thank you. I, um, then maybe I have this one backward. Sixth grade, Marquia Mathis Morton. No, you're seventh. Are you seventh grade? Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> Eighth 
and eighth grade Avery Smith Warrington Middle School. So for this first year of the poster contest, it was very successful and we were thrilled to have these great division-wide winners. Join me in congratulating them. Thank you for bringing your posters too. May we please have the Pierce and Brumfield Elementary School and the Fauquier High School and Liberty High School Destination Imagination teams come forward. Okay. And just so the audience understands these are the Destination Imagination teams who qualify for global competition. Destination Imagination is one of the world's largest creativity programs for youth of all ages with thousands of students participating on over 13,000 teams across the nation and in foreign countries. This program helps students, student teams discover how to build important lifelong skills such as problem solving, teamwork, and divergent thinking. Winning first place at the state tournament, Zach and the ladies, quote. <laughs> the team, the team is comprised of the team's namesake, uh, Zachary Purcell, Patty Antall, is that correct? Okay. Aaron Frederick, Mary Holtzlander, and Megan Tucker. Okay. This team of fifth graders, managed by Justine Purcell and Eileen Frederick, <laughs> will compete in the Real to Real Project Outreach Service Learning Challenge. This is one of seven open-ended challenges that require young people to apply science, technology, engineering, and math, Dr. Jack. <laughs> In addition to improvisation, theater arts, writing, project management, communication, innovation, teamwork, and community service. Qualifying for the Globals at the high school level is a team composed of 11th grade students from Falkier and Liberty High School managed by Jennifer Rockefeller. Members Matt David, Andy Rockefeller, Brent Schultz, Lizzie Berger, and Hannah Abiel. They have been together as a team since seventh grade at Taylor Middle School. Competing in the op improvisational challenge, the team achieved third place overall at the state tournament. This will be the team's second trip to the Globals, having qualified in ninth grade as well. In their challenge, they must show what life would be like after a dramatic change. They don't know what it is until they get on stage. They have to come up with a slogan after getting three nails and somehow incorporate plain white t-shirts into the performance any way they want. Improv at its best. <laughs> it is our honor to recognize these innovative and creative students this evening. Please join us.
Would Alexandra Wolf please come forward? Alexandra, are you here? Well, there were actually three students, Alexandra Wolf, Sam Eliezer, and Matthew Jacobs, who on April 20th at the Roanoke Civic Center in Virginia, uh, they actually won the USA State Leadership Conference um, Skills USA Award uh, for the state of Virginia, which means they get to go, uh, go to Ohio for the national competition. So I don't think the three of them are here today, but congratulations to those three folks and best wishes. And I think two of them are actually in, uh, they're competing currently in Dearborn, correct? Yeah. That's right. And that's, that would be Sam and Matthew. So congratulations to them. If you are present, will Tanvi Suresh, Suresh, Maggie Swift, Dana Lehman, Zoe Wade, Ethan Engel, Shane Hall, Daniel Watley, Jessica Doyle, and Joey Bayer. Are any of them here tonight? Oh, good. Come forward, please. These are the Technosphere Awards. The Technology Student Association gives members opportunities for leadership and personal growth in all areas of technology, innovation, design, and engineering. Through TSA's regional, state, and international competitions, members can challenge themselves in over 60 different categories in middle and high school. These competitions stress the importance of STEM, which stands for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, concepts, leadership, and presentation skills. Kettle Run High School students, Tanvi Suresh, am I pronouncing your name right? Okay, great. Raise your hand so everyone can see you. All right. Maggie Swift and Hannah Murray, and Fauquier High School student Dana Lehman, Lehman have qualified for Nash the national TSA competition by claiming first or second place at the 2013 Technos Technosphere State Conf Conference. At the state competition, Tanvi and Maggie took first place in the SciVise where students develop a visualization focusing on a topic from one or more of the STEM areas. Hannah took second in desktop publishing which required participants to produce a notebook containing a news release, a three column newsletter and poster and also worked to solve an on-site problem to demonstrate their abilities to use the computer to design and edit materials. Dana took second place in 2D computer aided architectural design where students must create representations such as a foundation or floor plans. During this conference, Zoe Wade of Fauquier High School placed third in technical sketching and application which requires participants to complete a written test in order to qualify for the semi-finalist level of competition where they must demonstrate their ability to solve on-site engineering graphics problems. A Kettle Run High School team comprised of Ethan Angle, Shane Hall, Drew Ward, and Daniel Watley placed third in engineering design and in this competition team members must design and fabricate a device that will meet the specific needs of a person with a disability which is greatly needed. Kettle Run High School students Jessica Doyle, Drew Ward, Hannah Murray, Joey Bayer, and Tandy Suresh took third in the on-demand video competition which requires students to shoot and edit a 60-second video on-site also at the conference. Please join me in congratulating these innovative, brilliant young scholars. And we want to wish Tanvi, Maggie, Hannah, and Dana the best as they go on to the national competition. Can Garrett Croson, Summer Church, Kevin Sanford, and Shannon McAvoy come on down? All 
All right, this says that you're Fauquier County High School seniors, but seniors that just graduated or your seniors? Oh, congratulations. Well, this is very impressive. That you're here. Very impressive that you're here. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, DECA is an international association of marketing students. One of the key activities for members is competition, providing students hands-on experiences in the fields of management, business services, travel, travel and tourism, and sports marketing. Fauquier High School seniors, Garrett Croson, am I pronouncing your name right, Garrett? Summer Church and whose summer is, well, you're, you're not Summer, you're Shannon, right? Yes. Okay, there you go. <laughs> knew somebody was missing. Uh, Garrett Croson, Summer Church, and Kevin Sanford uh, represented Fauquier County at the DECA International Career Development Conference in Anaheim, California. Very nice. The three DECA students qualified for national competition by placing in the top 10% of competitors at the 2013 DECA Leadership Conference in Virginia Beach. Through role plays and interviews, more than 2,000 students from schools throughout the state competed in a variety of categories, testing their marketing, financial management, and entrepreneurial skills. Garrett and Summer will compete in the Financial Services Team Decision Making event, and Kevin will compete in the Business Finance Series event. Future Business Leaders of America, FBLA, offers specialized business and leadership programs, competitive events, and co-curricular activities to complement academics while accelerating a student's leadership skills. Shannon McAvoy took first place in Introduction to Business and will compete at the FBLA National Championship Conference in Anaheim, home of Disneyland. <laughs> Very exciting. Congratulations to these outstanding students, and I think this is also a, a county policy that the superintendent must attend a, <laughs> this. Is that, that's correct? Okay, thank you. Uh, congratulations to uh, out these outstanding students who are working diligently to prepare for the future. Congratulations. <laughs> Our final recognitions for tonight are some very, very special journalism awards. Will Abby Duker and Abigail Seitz join me in the front? I don't know if Abigail is here or not. The Urban Journalism Workshop is a prestigious workshop training, training students in the basics of newspaper, broadcast, and multimedia journalism, and offering an inside look at journalism as seen by some of the industry's leading journalists. Any high school student with a minimum of two years of experience in journalism who wants to pursue journalism at the college level is el eligible to apply. A maximum of 40 students across the nation are selected. Kettle Run High School student, Abby Duker. <laughs> For the second consecutive year, participated in the Urban Journalism Workshop sponsored by the Washington Post. Last year, she attended the Broadcast Journalism Workshop, and this year, the Print Workshop. An article that she penned in actual handwriting was chosen for the Urban Village Voice, which will be published this month, and it was chosen for the front page. She also wrote a story about the area's Cherry Blossom Festival, which was selected for inclusion in the paper over articles written by 10 other students across the nation. Congratulations, Abby. The Scholastic Art and Writing Awards have an impressive legacy dating back to 1923 and a noteworthy roster of past winners, including, listen to this list, Andy Warhol, this is amazing, <laughs> Sylvia Plath, Truman Capote, Richard Avedon, Robert Redford, Joyce Carol, <laughs> and Joyce Carol Oates, my heart is beating. The <laughs> <laughs> this is wonderful. The awards are an important opportunity for students to be recognized for their creative talents. Teens in grades 7 through 12 can apply in 28 categories of art and writing for the chance to earn scholarships and have their works exhibited or published. Fauquier High School student Abby Sipes, is that right? Sipes? 
received a silver medal in the journalism category in the 2013 Scholastic Art and Writing Awards. More than 230,000 works of art and writing submitted by students were evaluated. 230,000. Abby's article, School Sports Bring Long-Term Consequences, was published in last year's Falconer and only the top 1% of submissions are recognized at the national level, and Abby's accomplishment places her among the most talented young writers in the nation. So once again, please join me in congratulating Abby and Abigail. Congratulations, this is huge. take a minute and let folks leave that don't want to stay for this riveting meeting but <laughs> there is a response to citizens time so we will move to citizens time this is an opportunity for citizens to express their concerns to the school board regarding the Fauquier County School Division matters relating to personnel issues or personnel matters should not be discussed and we're going to ask you to come to the podium I, I don't have a sign up was there a sign up sheet well, is there anybody in here that signed up to speak? Okay, good. Then we will move right along to announcements. All right, you want me to wait? Well, yeah, Ginger? I've got to wait for the official sheet to come in here. If they, you can do announcements while we're waiting. If they don't know that they signed yeah. up, then. I, I saw it out there on the table. But okay. I didn't see any signatures at the time, so. Okay. Okay, then we will move to announcements. Okay. Wednesday, June 12th, the Finance Committee will meet at Auburn Middle School at 5 p.m. Wednesday, June 12th, administration will hold a public forum on middle school programming at Auburn Middle School from 6.30 to 8.30. Thursday, June 13th, the Personnel Committee meeting has been um, rescheduled, and I don't know. The 20th? I think it's the 20th. The last I saw this the evening was the 20th. 20th at 5:30. Is that is that what it says? Okay, this okay. It is the 20th. Okay, that's when 5:30, I think. It, it has been revised a, a few okay. times, so that is the official one now. Okay, beginning today, the school board office summer hours are from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Thursday. The Mountain Vista Governor's School Governing Board will meet Thursday, June 20th at mm -hmm. 8 a.m. in the Warren County School Board Office. Chairman's Night will be Tuesday, June 25th. Everybody got that? Ju Chairman's Night, June 25th at 5 p.m. in the School Administration Office, and the School Board Work Session will be Tuesday, June 25th at 6 p.m. in the School Administration Conference Room. Board okay. members got that? Got it. Okay. And the next school board meeting is Monday, July the 8th at 7 p.m. And we have it here at the Warren Green Building for, for a while, probably. And at this time, Mr. Seitz, is he still in here? Well, if not, we can pass it along. We want to thank Mr. Seitz and his staff for hosting the board meeting tonight and the reception this evening. This requires a great deal of work, and being they just had graduation Saturday morning, they kind of pulled this together real quick for us. We also want to thank April Plummer and her staff for our refreshments during the reception. And we will move to board member reports. Mr. Bland, <coughs> want to start? Um, I would like to say... Congratulations to all of the uh, graduates uh, from uh, this past weekend, Liberty, Fork here, and Kettle Run, uh, and also to uh, thank the principals for a well-organized event. Uh, all of them went off flawlessly. It, it sure did. Um, I would also like to thank uh, Kathy Crane, uh, the winner of the Agnes uh, Meyer Award, uh, for uh, an invitation to be there uh, it, at the Washington Post for that banquet. It was uh, a great banquet. Um, and I would like to say this, it, it's funny, but 
I was on vacation here a couple of weeks ago, and I went up to California, and I got a chance to visit uh, Sony Studios uh, and, yeah. and Adobe Theater and, and, and watch to see all of these productions and everything. And lo and behold, as soon as I got back, I got a call, a casting call. Seriously. 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 Um, I participated in a play uh, at Thompson Elementary School with the second, crater, uh, second graders uh, on the life of George Washington. I was a narrator, and I had a ball. Uh, I, I, I think that's it. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll jump in before I forget what I was going to say. Um, you can't uh, top that. No, I cannot top that. Uh, we just, we had so many things that we've been asked to um, participate in over the last month, and they're all such fun. And last week was so much fun, starting with the retirement dinner, which I. Oh, yeah, I forgot about it. Was, yeah, yeah, that was great, and yeah. so many, but it's so sad, bittersweet to watch so many um, faces retire that you've known for such a long time. Um, the weekend was great, and um, you, it's been fun to welcome Dr. Jet. Thank you. And, and yeah, he came at the great time. He just, it's food everywhere he goes. It's, it's food. <laughs> food everywhere. Yeah. Um, I, I will, f um, for board members, the building committee minutes, it's a lot there. I'm not going to try to go through all of it. Do <laughs> just um, make sure that you noted that first um, presentation we had. It's regarding the um, property that's our, the school board's property. Um, over here next to Dr. Koch's property. Old place over that's here. going to be, mm -hmm. yeah, that has been sold and they need an easement. They want, they're asking for an easement and, and we're going to go look at it one morning. I don't even remember when. Okay. Um, I, I just really want to thank uh, Roger Seitz and Roger Lee and Major Warner for great graduations. It was, it was yes, just it beautiful. Was. And Dr. Jack, who was in charge of the weather, did an excellent, excellent <laughs> job. Um, really though it did rain on us just a few minutes yesterday, you just kind of whipped uh, on it. <laughs> no, it was it was really great. Um, the the only couple things I want to talk about is I attended the St. John Baccalaureate service, which was an interdenominational service for um, all the graduates from any school in um, all of Fauquier, and it was really wonderful. It was just beautiful. There weren't a lot of graduates there because of timing and, and scheduling, but it was. Wonderful, and I really want to thank St. John's for setting that up. It was it was beautiful. Um, the only other thing I really want to talk about, and we attended a hundred million things, but by far the most outstanding thing oh. was Mr. Davidson's oh. CAD Community yes. Automated Design and his engineering class project, uh, um, where they presented their projects. It was outstanding, and I was so impressed with all of the projects they had and the fact that these kids, when you talk with them about their project, they really had to work with the disabled person because the thing they designed had to assist a person with a disability in some way. But they s got really involved with the person with the disability to really understand their issue and their, their struggle with life. Um, one kid talked about his a grandfather not being able to get his grandmother out of bed, mm -hmm. so he designed this bed that lifted her out. I mean, it was, it was, it was excellent in so many ways. Not only design, but also caring for community members and family. So hats off to Mr. Davidson for this class. The other th it part he integrated with it is he had a friend who's an engineer and another a former Kettle Run High School student who's in college. I think at um, Mary Washington. I think oh, it was I George was Mason, oh. maybe. Well, anyway, these two were in a room, and the students had to go in and present their design and answer questions about their design and, and their plan and their economic plan and how they were going to market this thing. It was outstanding and exactly the kind of learning I think we need to do here overall in Fauquier County. So that, that was it. Uh, let me add one thing to that. There was one distressing thing about that, and we got to fix it. There were zero girls. Yeah. In those classes, zero. It was 38, 30, 38 boys or 30, and no girls. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It, so was, it was incredible. Yeah, um, it was. Fry it was, was incredible. incredible, and and we got to see the 3D printer 
Oh, you got to go look at that. Yeah. That is cool. It, it's amazing. I yeah. you just can't believe it. And seeing the 3D printer malfunction was even, even yeah. <laughs> that It was this wad of all this stuff. It was <laughs> great. It was, it, was, it was wonderful. And Ms. Reardon. Uh, I just want to say um, congratulations to all the graduates of uh, 2013. And um, I'm kind of in a special position because my last one graduated um, from Kettle Run on Friday night. And um, I truly want to say thank you to every teacher that um, came in contact with both of my children from C. Hunter Ritchie through Auburn Middle School to Kettle Run High School and everybody in administration that's responsible for making sure that the curriculum and everything is there for the kids because I truly feel that my children have been blessed um, by attending Fauquier County Schools. And, um, they're both ready for the next step, you know, whatever they choose to do. So thank you so much, really, from the bottom of my heart. Dr. Kip. Uh, I want to echo everything that was said about the uh, uh, Mr. Davidson's class. And, um, and I hope that um, what we saw Friday was uh, a glimpse of, of perhaps where we go, because that was a, a tremendous example of you sh show, showing me what you know, demonstrate to me what you've learned. Uh, and doing it in, in sort of a, a physical way. That was really awesome. Graduations this weekend. Um, that was a pretty amazing experience, particularly since all three of them were very different. Uh, but really great venues, extremely well organized, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, and, and, but it was a crazy weekend. A wedding crammed in there, grass cutting, <laughs> my, uh, my wife's birthday. It was all within a space of about 72 hours. So uh, it, was, it was pretty crazy. But, Really, really great and rewarding weekend. So um, thanks to all the principals and the staff, senior sponsors and whatnot for putting those things together. I know that's a tremendous amount of work, uh, but it went off all three without a hitch. So congratulations to everyone. Thank you. Then we move to the financial management report, Ms. Kotov. Good evening. You have before you the report as of April 30th. Um, you will see that we're 10 months at this point through the fiscal year, um, very similar in the operating fund to last year. And once again, there were strong sales in food nutrition. So that's helped uh, shorten the, the gap there. Um, since this is the financial report, I would like to take a minute to recognize our new interim finance director, John Munch. Oh. Um, he's with us. I'm very excited. So good things. Any questions on the report? No, ma'am. All right. Good. Thank, you. Thank you. Then we move to human resource and Ms. Down. Good evening. Um, currently, we're in high gear recruiting for the upcoming school year. We have 39 certified vacancies that we're recruiting for and 17 classified vacancies. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Very, and, we're, and we're moving on making offers daily. Um, also, we have set a transportation school nutrition hiring fair for July 10th, and we hope to fill some of those um, vacant school nutrition and bus driver positions. Any questions this evening? Where's, where's that going to be held? Liberty High School. Liberty. And we're going to have a special invitation for you to come out and talk to people. <laughs> <laughs> July, what was it, July 10th? July 10th, and it's going to start about 2 o'clock. Thank you. Okay, move to consent agenda. Madam motion. Chair, I move that the school board approve the following minutes of the May 13th school board meeting and May 28th special school board meeting and work session, payment of bills, personnel actions, high school social science elective textbook adoptions, high school CTE marketing textbook of adoptions, vocabulary program textbook adoptions, and Carl Perkins grant. Motion and a second that the school board approve the minutes of the May 13th school board meeting and May 28th special school board meeting and work session, the payment of bills, personnel actions, high school social science elective textbook adoptions, <laughs> high school, that's hard, high school CTE marketing textbook adoptions, vocabulary program textbook adoptions, and Carl Perkins grant. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no, and the motion carries. And I believe you want to say? Yes, uh, it's a pleasure to introduce 
the new principal at Greenville Elementary School, Dan Phillips, who's back there in the corner. Welcome, Dan. Dan, let me first say that uh, you have um, some incredibly large shoes to fill uh, in Margie Riley. And uh, to say that Margie is revered at her, her school is probably an understatement. So not to put any pressure on you <laughs> at all. Uh, but Dan comes to us from Greene County, where he is currently the interim principal at Nathaniel Green Elementary. Part of that, he was the director of student services and accountability. Uh, he's also been principal at Prospect Heights Middle School and Orange Elementary School, both in Orange County. So, and huge Steelers fans. For any, any Steelers fans <laughs> out there, uh, huge Steelers fan. And Dan, Dan is also a doctoral student at met probably the finest university in all of Blacksburg, Virginia, at Virginia <laughs> Tech University. So, congratulations, Dan. Do you have any, anything you'd like to say? Any comments? Great. Welcome. Thank We're you. excited to have you. Welcome. Okay, move to information items and let's see, community relations policy restructuring. That would be Ms. Bourne. There are, this is part of the reformatting of the policies. This section includes four policies. Three of them are ones that I oversee. One of them is one that Mr. Finn oversees, the service animals. Um, but in the, um, in, for brevity purposes, I was selected to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I could, I, I, I understand. The devil made me do it. <laughs> um, <That's> really, <laughs> um, these have been presented to you for information tonight. Um, for, and we are requesting that you uh, move them forward to the work session for more discussion. Mm -hmm. The, in most cases, the policies are consistent with what we've done in the past. In some cases, they've been updated with legislative changes. Um, we are in the process of making some changes to the regulation that goes along with the community use of school facilities. Some of you have some of those changes, and we'll, we're going to look at some additional changes as we move forward with this, um, and that's a regulation that Dr. Jack has um, the authority to approve. Um, but you have that in your package for your review and also discussion at the work session. So if, do you have any questions tonight? Or? Not tonight. No, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Revision of policy 3-3.13, fines and fees. Ms. Potoff. Yes, for information, um, we're presenting um, Amendments to the policy, the State Board of Education repealed the existing um, rules governing fees and they um, implemented and approved a new re regulations governing fees and charges. The big change here is they really spell out when you should apply waivers. Um, they talk about economically disadvantaged students and students whose families are undergoing economic hardships and are financially unable to pay them. So um, while the policy addresses this, we're also revising the regulations administratively to make sure that all the students that they um, caveat under this, that there is a way, a venue, that they can apply for these waivers. Mm -hmm. So we'll be doing that. So um, we would like to take this to work session. We can um, show you, by then we may have the regulations approved as well, so you can see how we plan to implement this. Okay, yeah, I, and I thought the language makes it quite difficult. Before it was easy to determine now it, 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 it broadens it, it yeah. really does. Um, free and reduced, um, the form that we use is the state form and it does capture some of those groups. It captures those students whose families um, get TANF and food stamps. So some of them we can um, capture those individuals by our existing forms mm -hmm. and then we um, have worked to find out what documentation they can provide if they meet some of the other areas, um, unemployment in those areas. Right. So it does really kind of broaden it and just uh, we just had to make sure that we had a, a vehicle available to capture those so we could waive those fees. Okay. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, revision of policy 3-3.5 purchasing and I believe Ms. Monaco's gonna. Hi. 
thank you one. for the opportunity to present just two small changes to you um, tonight. Last year, we completely revamped the procurement policy and presented that to right. you. And these are just some updates. The first is actually a change to the Code of Virginia that now permits the inclusion of a cashier's check as an alternative form of security aside from uh, bonds. Mm -hmm. Normally we do get bonds though. So that was the, that's a pretty minor change and that's noted on page 10 of the policy. The second is an addition to the exclusion section which was our exception section which was a new section added to the policy last year. And um, this is one that came about because I had thought that it could be interpreted from an exception that we had in there and then in practice realized this was one that we should have added in addition. Um, we did, I did a bit of research on this and I did a network inquiry with other purchasing agencies throughout Virginia. So if you would look through that language and perhaps if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to discuss them at the work session. Yeah. Thank and those you. are the only two changes at this okay. time. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Finn, Code of Student Conduct. I've got you. Um, I'll try. <laughs> that's right. Oh, that's right. It was Janice. I'm sorry. I'll try to be brief then. Uh, we are bringing to you uh, revisions to policy 7-3.1 Code of Student Conduct. And there are, as you know, this is an annual thing that we do. We always work on this document and improve it each year. Some years the changes are less significant. This year, the changes, we do have two significant changes. The one is that we are proposing uh, a major change in, in the policy and the, the joining regulation for the Code of Conduct, allowing students now to bring and use certain technology devices during designated times without consequence. So that is a significant change to our current policy. As we uh, look around, uh, other divisions and realize what's going on within our own division, we recognize that there's more and more of a compelling need to allow these devices in to school. And we're fighting um, a lot of battles in the discipline arena that really are, in a lot of ways, unnecessary. And what, what's also becoming very clear is, it's, is there's a, a need to integrate technology handheld devices in, in the instructional Absolutely. arena. And so um, we recognize that we, we need to function in the 21st century because that's where we're at, and that's what our intent is. And that's the way the students learn. That's it. So it's, it's become a part of their lives, and we need yep. to make that a part of what happens in school. So if we would ask that you review, we gave you the full mm -hmm. policy document. We provided um, an attached summary sheet that really outlines where the major changes are within the policy, just to assist, because it is a long policy. And we also um, provided the proposed regulation, which doesn't require your approval, but will assist in understanding the details of implementation there. The other major area of change <coughs> is in adding uh, restorative justice options to the code of conduct to reflect the range of choices that administrators have in meeting out discipline. And rather than it necessarily being a punitive uh, measure, we want to really highlight in the Code of Conduct the option for it to be educational. And so um, possibilities, community service, research projects that would teach a student something about the issue at hand in terms of their misbehavior. And we think that we may see some real productive outcomes as a result of that. So it's. Um, dipping our toes in, getting mm -hmm. uh, a little bit familiar with that, and we're going to evaluate that as we go through the year, assuming that you decide to approve that change. So I would ask that um, you know, any questions about either of these changes in particular that you email me maybe in advance of the work session so that I can uh, respond, because some of them may require some research, and mm -hmm. I would be glad to do that and try to get those answers back, and then we can discuss that at the work session. Um, I also just want to mention that there'll be some accompanying documents that we actually are working in draft form, but just so you're aware, uh, the student parent uh, permission registration form 
this, that students will have to return to school. It'll be a, a signed document that has to come to school to register their devices, and we're limiting that, um, I believe, Lewis, to two um, devices because we recognize there'll probably be a uh, like an iPad type device and, and possibly a phone. Um, so there will be that document that's, this, that's currently in a revised or a draft form. And we will also, um, we're working with Lewis right now on a revision to our acceptable use policy, which will be a very important piece that will outline uh, the, the guidelines for student use. Right now that policy exists as a student and staff policy, and we want to separate the two policies out. So that will be coming to you later in the summer. That didn't have as critical a timeline on it. So, um, the, the, and the only other thing I would mention is Dr. Mitchell has developed a um, document that will give some instructional guidelines to teachers as well for use in the classroom. Okay, any questions? So what, what our hope is is to have a conversation at work session right. and to ask it to be on the consent agenda uh, for the first meeting in July. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. When do you guys all want these questions? That, I work great with deadlines. Um, <laughs> tomorrow? No. <laughs> no. no um, you know, if we're coming back at work session, if maybe the end of next week, is that reasonable? No, that's good. Okay. That would be wonderful. Okay. Stay there, Frank. You're the next I, one. I was so lucky. Uh, the next <laughs> one, actually, the next one is, is actually simple. This is a, a revision to policy 7-5.3, administering med medicines to students. Um, and it's a result of House Bill 1468 that adds employees of local bodies and local health departments to those who have the authority to possess and administer epinephrine um, according to school board policy. So, you know, that's a simple one. You just need to look at the policy. We redline that for you, and it just adds those parties into the mm -hmm. language of the policy. Okay. That's it. See, I can be brief sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thank you. Fine with yeah, I'm fine that's, with that's, that's, yeah. that's, that's pretty simple in itself. Yeah. 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 Okay. I don't think there's any discussion on that one. Okay. Ms. Fry, CTE textbook adoption. Good evening. I'm Sarah Fry. I'm the Career and Technical Education Supervisor, and I'm here with the Trade Industrial Education Textbook Adoption for Cosmetology and Auto Body Repair. Um, these titles before you were selected by their respective committees that were comprised of teachers, parents, industry representatives, special education representatives, ESL representatives, and administrators. Um, while not included in your packet, they did use the same rubric that was used for marketing um, adoption, and they considered aspects such as the reading level, content coverage, the use of graphics, supplemental materials, and the quality of student exercises. These titles are on public display at Central Complex for the next 10 business days, and we did that because we're on the four-day weeks. Um, and the total cost of both of these adoptions together is just over 64000 plus shipping. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. I don't hear anything else. No, I don't either. Do we? No. Before you leave, oh, right here. Um, I would just like to say thank you, because a lot of those how many of those students that we recognize tonight come out of CT? <laughs> I'm really yeah. proud of them. The teachers are working really hard, and the kids are very engaged, and I'm very proud of their successes. Yeah, yeah. yeah Thank we you. are. Thank you. Yes. We. Consent on that one's Consent. fine. I think that's uh, fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Okay, anything else, anybody, before we adjourn? Um, I just, I, just a quick... How many people, audience members, just uh, as an audience member here or at Warren Green? Which do you like better? Here. <laughs> you like Warren Green better? Do you? Who? A few heads are shaking. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. What? No, are you done? Uh -huh. The air conditioning oh, okay. could be a little cooler. Well, it's Other usually freezing in Warren. Yes. Yeah. I think this would be fine, you know, but when we had those larger crowds like we had earlier. That's, oh, well, that's, little, that's, that's yeah, little, but just for a regular meeting. Okay, if there's no okay. other business. Oh, oh, yeah, I got something. Hold on. Okay. I have one. Don't, don't, don't get excited Go. there. Hold on. Uh, board, I just want to let you know that um, 
at the next Mountain Vistas, uh, Vista Governor's Crew meeting, uh, it is likely that a discussion and motion uh, will come to the table uh, that Fark Hill County Public Schools, Fark Hill County, uh, again be named the fiscal agent for Mountain Vista Governor's School. There will be some discussion on that. And I'm not sure of the, you know, how long this time frame would be, whether it's a year or two years or three years, whatever the case may be, but there will be some discussion and possible motion. Okay. That Fark Hill continue as the fiscal agent. I'm getting the nod over there, sir. Okay. And Ms. Wolf. Oh, I just wanted to, be this being the last uh, year and all the stuff that Mr. Rankin did for the graduation, to thank him for all the meetings that he does for us. Okay. okay. Then, I, I think we're done. that we adjourn. So move. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting adjourned.